Hello, my name is Captain Ben Hurst. I'm the County Shooting Officer of Derbyshire ACF and this presentation is going to focus on marksmanship principle number one. The position and hold must be firm enough to support the rifle. Objectives. By the end of this lesson you will be able to list the key equipment required for setting up a firing position, set up the rifle to the individual firer, Follow the correct sequence when setting up a firing position. Connect the sling to the rifle to the correct tension. Accurately place the butt of the rifle into your shoulder. And consistently place the head upright on the cheek piece. OK, what we're going to look at first of all then is the equipment required to set up a good solid firing position. First of all then we're going to look at the shooting mat. These can come in a variety of different sizes with various um, thicknesses of padding. They can come with a variety of different grips at the front of the mat and some can be waterproof, some can be fabric, depending on personal preference. The second piece of equipment we're going to look at is the shooting glove. They can come in a variety of sizes depending on the hand size and they can come handed depending on which shoulder you fire from. They can come in fingerless, like this example here, and they can also come with full finger gloves. Looking at the sling, you can get these in either plastic or leather, and there's a wide range of variants available on the market. When the sling is fitted to your arm, you need to make sure that the metal buckle faces in towards your body, so when it is clipped to the rifle, the sling is facing away from the wrist and doesn't dig in. If you'll notice at the back of the sling, the bit that goes around your arm, it curves slightly. This is to make sure that it doesn't dig in when it is under tension. This varies depending on whether you're left or right handed. There's a wide range of ear defenders out on the market. This is a set of electronics which is really useful for coaching. But when shooting, it's important to make sure they're switched off to minimise the distractions on the firing point. You need to make sure they're in good serviceable condition with no tears around the seals and that the foam within the cup is in good condition. Shooting caps are also a really useful piece of kit to have in your equipment. They can act as a shade to prevent the sun glaring in your eyes and the tunnel caps especially can be used to prevent any distractions in your peripheral vision. Finally then we're going to have a look at the shooting jacket. There's a wide range of jackets available out in the market. They can either be bought off the peg or can be made to measure. There's a number of different manufacturers that specialise in this depending on your budget. They come with elbow pads to help grip with the mat and a number of additional padding areas where you need them. They also come with a section of material that will help hold the sling in position and adjustable straps on the back of the right shoulder to help reduce any build up of excess material. Looking at the rifle now there's a number of key things that you need to bear in mind when setting up the position. The first one is the position of the handstop itself. As you can see under the stock there's a rail which that handstock can slide up and down and depending on the physique of the individual and the size that can be adjusted to suit them. Ideally the handstop should be in a position where if the rifle is picked up and rested on the flat of the hand with the hand tight against the handstop the rifle should balance. The further forward the handstop is the lower the position will be. For full bore you've got to make sure that the back of the wrist is at least four inches above the ground. This can easily be checked by resting the Bisley Bible between the ground and the back of the wrist. Looking at the back of the rifle, you've got the butt plate. That can be undone and spacers can be placed into it on this particular model. And again, depending on the rifle, you can get fully adjustable butt plates. Also, depending on rifle type, there's an option to be able to adjust the cheek piece, which again, depending on sight position and bone structure of the face, uh, can also work as a massive aid when setting up a comfortable, stable position. Also, when setting up the rifle, you need to think about the firer's size and height. 
The rifle may need to be adjusted to suit the individual, so as it fits them correctly. One of the key things you need to think about is the length of the stock between the butt and the pistol grip. A good starting point to check this is by simply placing the butt of the rifle into the crease of your elbow, extending your forearm across the rifle and grasping the pistol grip. Once you've done this, for the stock to be the right length, the palm of your hand should naturally fall onto the pistol grip. If the stock is too short, then you can add butt spacers, and likewise if it's too long, then they can be removed. What we're going to move on to look at now then is the nine key point checklist. First of all you've got leg position, butt position, right hand grip, right elbow position, left hand grip, left elbow position, head position, relaxation and breathing. Now this checklist has been took directly out of the Cadet Training Skill at Arms pamphlet for the GP Rifle from Rifle Lesson 5. Now for Target Rifle there are a few key differences that need to be considered. With the extra equipment and setup requirements for things like sling, the sequence and the order of what we build our position around needs to be moved around slightly. These next few points will help highlight this and then we'll start to look at each of them in more detail. First of all, you've got sling position, right hand grip, right elbow position, butt position, left hand grip, left elbow position, leg position, head position, relaxation and breathing. We're now going to have a look at each section in more detail. Looking at the first element of the setup then, first of all you need to make sure that you've got the sling correctly positioned on the upper arm and tightened up to the correct position. You can then look to put on the shooting glove and make sure that the fabric of the shooting jacket is over the glove, not causing any discomfort. Clip the sling onto the rifle ensuring that the left hand is tight against the handstock and then adopt the prone position ensuring that that left elbow is correctly in place. So once the left arm is in place you can start thinking about putting the butt of the rifle into your shoulder. Using the right hand, using the thumb and forefinger, grasp the butt of the rifle and then feel it into the position of the shoulder. Once you've done that, you can move on to take hold of the pistol grip with your right hand, laying the right elbow down where it falls, just tucking it in a little bit, just so as it locks everything into position. Once the butt of the rifle is in your shoulder, this is a good opportunity to have a look at your sling tension. You need to make sure that it's tight enough and secure in the shoulder, so there's no slippage, but not so tight that it's uncomfortable. Looking at the leg positions, the first example you can see here is leg position 1, where you can see both legs are straight with the right leg running parallel with the line of the barrel and the left leg running parallel to the line of the spine. Looking at leg position 2, you'll see the right leg is drawn slightly higher with the knee bent. Depending on physique and personal preference, this can be a preferred option. By drawing up the knee, it helps rotate the body to the left hand side, taking the pressure off the heart and reducing the effect of the pulse. Once you've established the key elements of the position and hold, you can then start to look at head position. You need to make sure that the cheek is resting lightly on the cheek piece and your head is kept upright with the right eye level and square to the line of the rear sight. And finally, once everything's all set up, you can start to relax and think about your breathing. As you can see, as you breathe in, the barrel of the rifle dips down. As you breathe out on the exhale, the barrel of the rifle will lift up. That's something that you need to think about when moving on to the next marksmanship principle. The rifle must point naturally at the target without undue physical effort.